Um, as, as, as we understand, software-defined memory is a little bit difficult terminology. So uh, with, with your permission, I picked a software-defined flexible memory footprint as, as the theme to, to talk about. <coughs> uh, uh, later today, uh, there will be uh, discussions about how memory is forming and the landscape of how we need memory these days. Uh, what I will talk about today, right now, is uh, how OCP can help technologies such as CXL bring uh, memory into um, enclosures and systems that we are building. Uh, it's just an example. Other technologies are very well possible as well. Uh, but throughout the whole story, I tell that the fundamental requirements will still persist for us to be able to uh, ship some of these into data centers. So in general, um, we can think of OCP creating this flywheel of success, uh, bringing industry efforts from multiple consortia, bringing different technologies, um, software ingredients, hardware ingredients, into uh, a collection of modular hardware, modular software, and eventually top it all off with uh, test and validation. This is the vision that we're driving for next year. Hopefully we can, with your help, be successful in driving that. OCP normally works uh, on multiple layers of specification. You probably have heard. It is very similar to when a composer uh, gets ins inspirations, a conductor makes interpretation of that, musician eventually uh, plays the uh, music, and the audience will enjoy that. The same layer of uh, uh, specification, we're thinking about a base specification, design specification, and eventually products that go into the marketplace and will ship it out so that any end users can benefit from that. So um, again, OCP provides this uh, flywheel of success. CXL as a technology could be an example that we can take it into that flywheel. Um, the opportunities that CXL can provide as far as the uh, interconnect itself is a high-speed, low-latency, cache-coherent, uh, optimized around memory semantics around uh, load and store. Um, it has applications for memory, storage, and accelerators. It does have three different protocols, .io, that's very similar to PCIe, .mem, that uh, makes it look like a type three device and be a memory contributor, and with the dot cache bringing in the accelerator uh, and, and uh, uh, in working in a heterogeneous environment. So all of that are available to us, and what do we do with them? Um, a number of um, companies have started building products and solutions around CXL. Uh, CPU suppliers, SOC suppliers have already uh, announced their uh, product roadmaps. Memory controllers, switch suppliers even, uh, storage, networking, and accelerators have uh, announced the products around CXL. Uh, the fact that a broad range of uh, innovators are pulling together and designing to CXL is perhaps the key for success for CXL as compared to perhaps other implementations that uh, did not uh, arrive at such broad uh, adoption. Um, technologies are great, but customers really have certain basic needs. Um, enterprise customers, for example, have their, uh, they're used to a certain level of success in the past. They take advantage of cloud uh, services so that they can take the stories into large scale. Uh, with that, they, they bring their requirements into the cloud and hyperscale systems. And of course, the edge data centers benefit from the fact that enterprise and cloud interplay in that environment. Uh, customers still have the fundamental requirements. The solution needs to work well. It needs to be useful. Quality uh, within uh, several uh, areas of security, safety, reliability, and availability need to be maintained. Um, systems need to still be serviceable, manageable, diagnosable. 
uh, solutions uh, need to perform well. Uh, and eventually, things need to uh, be efficient, uh, power efficient, space efficient, cost efficient. All of those are ingredients that are fundamental in whatever we do. Um, especially when you go to large data centers, efficiency is important, robustness is important, at scale debug is very important. So uh, the solutions that have been presented um, are, again, fundamental. You start with a balanced core architecture. And um, we are working together to come up with uh, general purpose building blocks. We can put them together into extensible solutions. With a key number, small number of building blocks, we can build very many systems. As an example, um, we have a challenge uh, at a large data center um, with the number of SKUs, number of individual elements that we need to ship to cover all of the general purpose uh, workloads. The tough problems that we have, as you guys are familiar, you start with a processor, it has so many cores. Based on that, you determine how much memory you need to uh, have, how much memory uh, bandwidth you need to have, how much network bandwidth, how much storage you might have. If the system is fixed, um, you have to make some trade-offs. A lot of times you trade off towards um, supporting more larger VMs, more VMs, different types of VMs, and therefore you end up uh, creating a system that although it is balanced in certain areas over-provisioned. Either you have a little bit more network bandwidth or memory or storage. Uh, that makes it inefficient to some degree. So, CXL comes in, can it help? Uh, it is offering a number of uh, capabilities. Uh, CXL allows us to build different topologies, system, systems with different topologies. You're familiar with some of those. A dual socket server is very familiar to everybody. Uh, building a fabric of individual servers using PCIe switches, people have done, have been very successful. Now with CXL, we can do all of that. In addition, we can think of having uh, pools of memory, as an example, uh, that might be connected to multiple servers. Uh, memory uh, semantics, losing load store, will be possible with uh, CXL. You can even think about larger systems that uh, multiple server nodes could be connected to different and multiple <laughs> memory uh, nodes. Uh, all without um, any kind of added latency through individual devices, support a large memory pool. This could be extensible and could work even in an heterogeneous environment. So those are the capabilities that we could expect from CXL. It's just a matter of us uh, envisioning what those are, working towards them, and making them happen. So uh, this is an eye chart, you could think. Uh, but in d defining these system capabilities, um, we've had to come up with some terminology, some taxonomy. What is memory pooling? Uh, we can define that one as uh, an area that um, a, a device can be subdivided into smaller pieces. Each piece at different times uh, could be uh, used by a different processor. Uh, memory sharing is an extension of that. Is uh, a memory device, for example, is subdivided into smaller pieces, but a piece of that, a region of that, a segment of that can concurrently be uh, assigned to different hosts. And um, other other concepts will come out. Uh, memory borrowing, for example, um, you have a server that has access uh, through CXL connection to some other component that perhaps we can think about uh, borrowing some memory from that. The concept of fabric itself, uh, different people have different definitions for that. But in this context, we can think of a, a, a capability for being able to compose uh, systems out of individual pieces that are otherwise um, independently connected to uh, a fabric. And then through that, we can talk about disaggregation. Disaggregation could be physical. We've had head nodes through cables be connected to expansion chassis. 
as one model of disaggregation. Uh, we can think about logical disaggregation that um, um, through networks you can um, software defined uh, uh, servers can be composed of having a processor in one section, memory in another section, storage in another section. Local disaggregation uh, is a kind of a notion that you do not exactly physically separating a chassis. Everything could be inside a chassis, but there are multiple nodes, multiple hosts, uh, still having access to a pool of memory. Makes it simpler in physical design to achieve these concepts. Um, and that's the trade-off that we have to bring in. What is the scale of uh, uh, this disaggregation as compared to the challenges that uh, building large systems can bring fault tolerance, latency, robustness. Um, so it's a trade-off that we have to have. And because of that, we had to come up with some terminology. Um, hopefully, um, we can use similar terminology to describe similar things. Now, CXL um, perhaps cannot be the end all for all solutions. Um, we will do what makes sense. Uh, PCIe, for example, has been very successful in moving data in block modes, RDMAs, DMAs, large payloads. Um, it's a good, good transport for moving large blocks of data. CXL comes around and says, okay, I can do all of that, and I can also do uh, uh, memory load and store semantics for short packets, and it is cache coherent. It will enable new techniques that we can do for latency sensitive systems. Um, these optimizations uh, very likely will require uh, new software pro um, programming models and paradigms as well. Uh, through any technology, there will be a transition, um, learning new tricks, uh, doing optimizations, and eventually moving forward. But because, again, we have customers that are demanding, they require certain robustness and um, uh, fault tolerance, all of those fundamental uh, requirements will still persist that we need to do. Sometimes it is not very glorious to work on those items, but those are the ones that make a large data center work. Um, so we, as a community, uh, can help. Uh, there are a lot of aspects of making things work. Um, CXL defines a composability concept for which we will need a CXL fabric manager. Uh, very similar uh, topics that we have already covered with PCIe, we need to repeat with CXL and building the ecosystem. The preview with the environment is important. Uh, working with a device driver is important. A device driver and a CXL fabric manager and preboot environment, all of them working with uh, a hypervisor or virtual memory manager, uh, that will be important. And uh, um, we will work together and come up with perhaps uh, OS-specific solutions for some of these challenges. So um, I can summarize by saying that um, we, as a community uh, at Open Compute Project, OCP, uh, are building uh, a flywheel. We bring in technologies, solutions, into hopefully a successful perpetual uh, wheel. Uh, benefits are recognized. We understand the fundamental requirements are still there but we do need an ecosystem of many companies, different skill sets, and different uh, aspects of the problem to be solved. And you guys are really the enablers. Um, you are part of uh, the community, can work to build balanced and modular systems, solve the problem in one area, apply it to other areas. And eventually, uh, perhaps next year, is a good time for us to come up with different POCs around these new technologies, such as CXL, such as the modular hardware system, and um, prove them out and take them to production. So basically, if you remember, we're riding the coattail of giants. You are the giant. Uh, please uh, lend, lend your coattail. 
Um, thank you.